How are you doing tonight or this morning or this afternoon or whenever and wherever you are? Um, I'm just here live to answer your questions as I let you guys know about an hour ago. Um, so let me go on over to our Facebook group because I know some of you had questions for me. Um, so let me go ahead as you are rolling in the comments, say hello. If you are having a question for me, if you are here to ask me a question live, just go ahead and drop it in the comments below so that I can see it and I can answer you. So let me go ahead and pull up that question thread from an hour ago asking you guys if you had any questions. <clears throat> so first of all, chapstick, or I should say lip moisturizer, not chapstick. Alrighty, so Robin's question was about recipes for energy or a pick-me-up. So I would, first of all, Robin, be interested in knowing what essential oils that you already have. Um, but first thing, peppermint can be energizing. It does have a couple of safety issues, so that may be a concern depending if you have children under the age of six that may be um, breathing that in if you are diffusing it, or you can use it in a personal inhaler. Um, you may need caution if you are breastfeeding with peppermint because for some women it actually reduces the milk supply, um, but it can pick right back up after you stop using peppermint essential oil. Um, other essential oils for energy that people have found useful and that have, you know, energetic um, components to them or stimulant, I should say, to the nervous system and all of that or, or to the limbic system on an emotional level um, can be some of the citrus essential oils. Probably not bergamot. That's like calming to sedative. Um, but lime is great. Lemon is great. And those can boost your energy as well. But let me know what essential oils you have. Um, Morgan is asking how I feel about CBD oil that includes essential oil. So I would recommend if you are using CBD oil to use the kind that does not have the essential oils, because if you are using essential oils internally, then you could have a chance of adverse reactions. So I would be super careful with that. Um, there's no need to add essential oils to the CBD oil, which is a whole other topic. But as for the ingesting of essential oils, I do not recommend it. If you should be ingesting essential oils, it's for a specific purpose for a typically a short time in a very specific way um, and very specific essential oils. So as for essential oils being used as a food flavoring or a flavoring for the CBD oil, that is not something that I personally recommend participating in. Um, CBD vapes, any vapes with essential oils, I am not a fan of either. Um, you always want to look for the safety of the essential oil um, before you decide on how to use it. So make sure that the essential oils used for whatever purpose are actually safe for you. Um, some essential oils are not safe to diffuse in your home that has cats, dogs, children, um, that has maybe pregnant sister-in-law or um, a husband on a medication or whatever it is. And there are lots of essential oils that are safe and that you can use for all of the above, except for cats. Um, but always make sure you are checking the safety of the essential oil first. Um, but vaping, I do not recommend. Let me just see if I ha actually have that information over in the learning center um, or if that's in my basics course. I know it's in the basics course, but I'm not sure if I mentioned anything about vapes in the ingesting area. So PS, by the way, if you are not already a member of our learning center, it's 100% absolutely free to access all of the information over there. And if you haven't heard yet, I know I feel like a broken record. And for those of you that listen to all of my lives, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but there are some of you here that this is the first time hearing it. Um, Facebook was flagging my posts previously because I talk about um, the benefits of essential oils and what you can use them for, and I'm very plain about that. Um, the FDA doesn't mind because I don't sell essential oils, but typically if you do sell essential oils, you, you have to be very careful in your wording and what you say when it relates to essential oils. 
I don't have to worry about that. I don't sell essential oils. I educate about essential oils. But Facebook, on the other hand, has their own rules. So when I talk about tea tree being antiviral, or when I talk about using helichrysum for bruising, or whatever else, they tend to flag those posts. Since I've been pointing you guys instead to the Learning Center, they haven't done that. Um, because I've been very careful to do, you know, tell you guys to go over here instead. Um, so what that does is it allows you to have access to a membership that's for free, but it keeps out the Facebook robots that flag my stuff because yes, they were flagging stuff that was on my website. So even if I had, I literally had a picture or said something like, what's your favorite essential oil or some lame thing, like just completely generic. And they didn't even like that because of what my website had on it. So anyways, Feel free to join the Learning Center absolutely free at leahjacobson.com. Scroll down to get the yellow box. Um, and in there, you can click on the Inhaling tab. Um, and then you can find out more information about um, diffusers and all of that stuff. And I was just checking to see. I don't have vaping sticks over there. Of course, I have personal inhalers over there. Um, that is part of our basics course that is no longer open for enrollment currently because the class is, of students is actually taking the course right now. But I do not recommend using vaping sticks with or without essential oils. Um, Melanie is asking the oil that is best for lung health. Um, if your lung is actually compromised, then you need to be actually really careful. So I'm not really sure what the question is here. What is the best for lung health? Um, if you are asking what essential oils can be good for respiratory issues or for congestion, something like that, I would suggest fir needle. It's absolutely amazing. It's great for clearing up congestion and it's safe for all ages. Um, Sharon says, I always love to hear you talk about oils. Yay, Sharon. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, Sarah. I'm seeing some comments now. Hooray. Sarah is saying, I received a recipe for a glow serum, which included copaiba, lavender, and frankincense. Initially, this was a great recipe and worked well, but this last time I made it, my skin really dried out. Equal parts of each. Is there a better recipe you would recommend something with halicrysum? So, Sarah, what was your base? Please tell me that you were using something other than copaiba, lavender, and frankincense, frankincense essential oils. Did you have that in a carrier oil, hopefully? Um, if so, what was that carrier oil? Um, if you were simply using those essential oils without a carrier, yes. Essential oils can be very stripping and astringent. Um, they are amazing, especially lemon, for removing grease from ovens, but they are extremely concentrated and potent. So if you weren't using them in a carrier, then I can see why it was just complete overkill. Um, you definitely want to make sure that that is something that you dilute. So I'll wait for your answer. Hopefully it was diluted. Um, but you did say equal parts of each. So, each, so now I'm concerned. Um, Ashley's asking, if an oil has an analgesic property, can it be used for analges um, analgesia via inhalation to try to before applying top? No. So if you have um, topical skin pain, I would recommend that you apply the essential oil topically. So inhalation is great for emotional slash limbic issues, um, as well as, you know, mood, all of that stuff. But for pain, um, you want to make sure that you are applying it topically. Now, this is something, although the basics course is not currently open for enrollment, guess what? How you can access these lessons one a week is actually through the Essential Oil Recipes Club, the EO Recipes Club, which you can find at leahjacobson.com. Scroll down to you hit the green box and enroll there. Um, but that is available at the VIP level. And we just, this last week on Friday actually, released the second to last lesson for module three. So we are quite a bit away into the basics course, but that is actually included in the VIP enrollment. So if you enroll now, you can have access to all of those. Let me just click on here so I can actually show you. Um, module one, what are essential oils, which is a really important understanding what essential oils are, how they work, their concentration so that you can, you know, really respect them and understand you have to dilute. Um, module two is all about the inhalation methods. We go step by step through all the different ways you can inhale. 
Um, but key to that is actually going to be lesson um, three, which are the situations in which inhalation is ideal. So it goes into all the different um, health issues and things that you can actually um, benefit from inhalation. And I give you the different essential oils as well that are going to be helpful by body system for those issues. Um, module three is all about the common inhalation questions like how to use a personal inhaler, can you overdo inhalation, um, when you should not inhale, vaping stick versus personal inhaler, how to do a steam inhalation, um, you know, why isn't your diffuser working, a whole bunch of questions. So modules two and three is all about inhalation and module four, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks, is going to be all about topical use. So the situations that you need um, to be aware of when you want to apply topically. So this question, Ashley, if you have topical pain, do you get benefit from inhalation? What you want to do is focus on topical application for topical pain. So this really breaks it down into exact things that you need, um, the exact situations that you are in, you know, to understand and know when to apply topically and when to inhale. Now, inhalation does have a part in pain management because it can help calm you and make you feel better, such as labor, for example. Inhaling lavender, clary sage, jasmine, rose, um, geranium, sweet orange, those are calming essential oils that can be very helpful and make you feel better. But if you do have topical pain, you wanna deal with that topically. So in these lessons, by the way, too, you get exact dilutions, um, all of the things that you need to know about all of that in the course. Um, let's see. And, and by the way, like I said, the course is available through a back door. Basically, if you are VIP in the EO Recipes Club, they're actually bonus classes. I don't really mention it too much um, because it's not really, they're not recipes, but it's just a bonus along with all of the recipes that you get. Um, how much do you dilute an essential oil? That is going to depend on the situation. So back to module four, when to apply topically, what to apply, how much to apply, and then also how often, and um, how much to dilute as well is in there. You have dilution charts and everything. So it tells you in module four, um, depending on the situation that you have, how much to dilute. I know a lot of places have, and I do too, I have general charts. I'm like, okay, these are going by age, just to give you a ballpark of where to start. So for kids, half percent or 1% for most issues is where you wanna start. After age six, you can start you know, at 1% and then go up. Um, adults typically is going to be 2%, 1% on the face. But when you have a serious health issue, when you have something like tendinitis and you need 10%, or if you have something um, like sciatica when you need 10% or even 20%, when you have, you know, there's various um, dilutions based on basically the severity of the trauma and how much pain and all of that. So there is a general age thing to go by, which is again, just a ballpark, but you want to actually override that by the specific situation and issues. So you can find all of that also in the EO Recipes Club. Um, I have all of the dilutions shown when you hover over when you are on a desktop. I have all the dilutions shown, and in fact, you can actually see it on your phone in the menu as well, for all of the different health issues. You will see that for the chicken pox recipe, it's actually a 50% dilution. And you might be like, oh my gosh, Leah, you are all about safety. Why would you dilute anything to 50%? Like, that is a lot. That is one drop of carrier to one drop of essential oil. That is ridiculous. Why would you do that? The reason is because there are some situations like bee stings and bug bites and chicken pox, which is viral and it itches a lot and you're miserable, where you can actually appropriately use essential oils without any dilution at all. So actually to be conservative, I am actually diluting it with a carrier oil and instead of it being 100% and using it just neat, I'm actually recommending cutting that with a carrier because a 50% dilution, and this is in my bug bite recipe that is actually available at the free level of the EO Recipes Club. I do have free level, uh, free recipes available as well. You will see it's a 50% dilution. It's a very high dilution because you need one swipe, you're done. The risk versus benefit in that situation, the benefit outweighs everything because we all know 
how chicken pox or a bug bite can be extremely, extremely itchy. I got chicken pox as a kid. I think a lot of people my age probably have gotten it naturally. And it's annoying. You know, it, it's not the end of the world. You survive. It's annoying for a few days. You have a fever and it's itchy and whatever, but it can actually leave a scar. So in that situation, you want to put essential oils on at a high dilution because one swipe does the trick. One swipe does the trick. If you can swipe that as soon as the itching starts, it will kill it. It will nip it in the bud and it will just simply not itch again. It's seriously that effective. So bug bite recipe, 100% free eorecipes.com, eorecipesclub.com. Actually, I think I probably have eorecipes as well. Um, I have so many domains, it's not even funny, but you can access that information over there. Um, so yeah, that would be a situation um, in which you would need a very, very high dilution because you do not want to keep scratching that. If you were going to use a 1% dilution, it's probably going to start itching again in a few minutes. You're going to have to keep reapplying and reapplying and reapplying. So dilution is key when you know the essential oil to use and the dilution to use and how often to reapply. That is the key to having success with essential oils. So I hope that answers your question, Raven. Um, if you have a specific situation that you are thinking about, I can be more helpful, but it really depends on the situation as far as how much to dilute. Um, Ashley is asking about headaches specifically. So you are talking about analgesic. So what you can do um, is you can inhale analgesic essential oils, yes, but what you are looking for for a headache is probably going to be like anti-inflammatory. Um, let me just peek over here because in the recipes club, I do tell you the um, therapeutic property that you are looking for. So under a headache, I actually have a couple of different recipes over here for headache. None of them are at the free level. However, I do have information on the introduction to headache page, but we are going to be looking for ding, 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 anti-inflammatory. So you are going to be looking for, I was just double checking, anti-inflammatory essential oils for the headache. Yes, you can throw analgesic in there as well. Um, and you can do that for topical pain, but headaches is really more of like a nerve thing. Um, stress related sometimes, sometimes it's dehydration. And I have those tips um, in the introduction post for headache too, so that you can have some um, information there too. Hey, Marsha, you are welcome, Sarah. So Ashley says, I guess what I'm wondering is if I have a headache, what property should I be looking for to choose an oil to inhale? So yes, it would be anti-inflammatory. You are welcome. Um, okay, and Ashley, you are going to love the new resource. So I think you actually even commented on that post from the other day. I'm actually, I've been working on a new resource for you guys so that you can do things like this. You could be like, I have a headache. What essential oil do I use? And I literally tell you, I'm like, okay, headache is a nervous system thing. You're going to look at the nervous system and I'm going to give you, okay, anti-inflammatory, whatever the therapeutic properties are that you want to look for but I'm also going to list for you the essential oils that are that therapeutic property so that you can then know exactly the essential oils to grab as well as how to use them. So I already have the therapeutic properties um, profiles, which is found in the library. And this is going to be that on steroids. You know, the really the therapeutic properties profiles is really the best kept secret. I know I do not talk about it very often, but that is seriously the key behind all of my recipes. Because once you access that, you have across the top all of the therapeutic properties. You have anti-inflammatory. Let me click on that one. It actually, if you don't know what that means, I actually let you know anti-inflammatory, otherwise known as anti-phlogistic essential oils reduce inflammation. Then I tell you, as situations in which anti-inflammatory essential oil can be helpful, Immune inflammation, muscular pain. I actually don't have headaches specifically listed because there are so many things that actually this covers, but muscular pain, respiratory issues, and inflammation, skin inflammation. Then I list for you um, how to use it topically. I give you seven essential oils, including peppermint, frankincense, lavender, chamomile, cedarwood, that are going to be the best, as well as more essential oils that are also effective. So that's where I would suggest that you start for now, if you want to know the therapeutic property to look for. But this new resource that I'm going to be putting together is kind of a combination of that and the blending class where I have everything split out by body system and all of the different essential oils listed with safety. 
it's going to be a huge time saver, um, especially for those of you who don't need recipes, don't want recipes, and don't want access to the recipes club, because if you do, then I do all the work for you there. You don't even have to think about what group of essential oils am I looking for. You click headache, you have your recipes, you're done. Um, Jessica, is VIP access 29 a month and can you pay through PayPal? You can pay through PayPal. Um, VIP access is 37. The $27 is for member. So what the difference is, is as a member, you have access to all the recipes. You're done. Everything's available to you. As a VIP, however, you have access to recipes and the essential oil classes that I was just talking about, where you pretty much learn behind the scenes, the what and the why and the how about essential oils. Um, and also as a VIP, you get access to our Facebook group where I go live every single week. So every single week, the members in that Facebook group, we have about 200, I believe. Some members of the EO Recipes Club aren't in, on Facebook, so they don't have access to the Facebook group. Um, but there are a couple of hundred of you over there and every week you vote on the next recipe that I add to the recipes club because I add a new recipe every single week. And when I say new recipe, um, that means like health topic, like for scar, I have several different, um, recipes for scar. I have a roll, I have two different roller bottles for headache. However, I have two different personal inhalers, two diffusers, two aroma and two massage blends for headache. So there's like what, 10, 10 recipes right there. Um, but I add, um, I basically solve a new health issue for you each and every week um, that I add to what is already there. Plus, I go live on whatever you want me to discuss, which is always a different thing. So there's a new recipe every week. Plus, there's a new topic of discussion every week. Um, last week, it was actually, let me look. Last week, I added sugar scrub. Week before that, I added liquid foundation. And last week we talked about sciatica. The week before that we talked about cough. So it's always going to change and it's going to depend on you and your votes and what you want to see added and also what you want to see talked about. So um, that's the difference between member and VIP. Members, recipes, VIP is recipes plus the essential oil classes, the Facebook group, and let's not forget to mention custom recipes. So if you need, I have substitutions available already in the recipes club that you can have available um, at the member level. But if you're like, Leah, I noticed you don't have a recipe for XYZ. Can you make one for me? Just like that. I make one for you right in the Facebook group. So there have been times where that's happened, where a member's like, oh my God, this just happened. What do I do? Help. And I'm like right there. So I work with you on the essential oils that you already have. And, and we come up with a custom blend just for you. So, um, let's see, is there an essential oil for muscle fatigue? Wondering if a topical is more effective than anything else. Topical will definitely be effective for muscle fatigue. Yes. Um, that is what you want to do is apply topically. Sarah's like, woohoo. Jessica, Jessica's like, okay, cool. Can you cancel anytime? Absolutely. The second you cancel your access is, is, um, not granted. It's, it's revoked, I should say, and you're done. So, it's very easy to cancel at any time. Um, it does automatically renew for you, but the, just be aware, aware that the day you cancel is the day that your access is revoked. It honors your request immediately. Um, and what else did I want to mention? Um, and then you also lock your price in. We have people that joined at a lower price point when I first released it that are still paying that really low price point. Um, so when I raise it and I will, as this fills, I've done it. I jump my prices. So just be aware that when you enroll, if the price ever goes up for anybody new, you have it still locked in at that level. So you can lock your level in and never, ever have to pay more, even though others do. Um, Raven, would lavender be good for muscle fatigue or peppermint? Um, you know, that's a really great question. Um, I would suggest peppermint, to be honest. Um, if there's any pain involved, peppermint does great for pain as well as stimulation for the muscle. But lavender also can provide that relief. So for muscle fatigue, like you mean like you worked out really hard and your muscles are sore and tired. In that case, I would suggest something soothing or calming. Um, we have recipes in here for muscle ache. In fact, I have three different recipes. I have a standard recipe. I have a cooling recipe, which is what you want to apply on a hot inflamed muscle. 
And then I have a warming recipe, which is for um, muscles that feel icy cold that you need to bring heat to. So I have three different massage blends for that, as well as three different um, roller bottle options as well. Then we have recipes for muscle cramp spasm. Then we have recipes for tendonitis and, and a bunch of other muscle type things. So let me know, be a little bit, okay, overworked muscles. So you are going to go for muscle ache. That's what you are going to want to do um, because you want something to be more calming and soothing to that, to that ache, um, which peppermint can do. Absolutely. So um, let's see, I don't think I have any muscle recipes available at the free level, but I believe, let me just click on here really quickly, in the muscle ache introduction post, I do talk about hot pain, which you want uh, cooling essential oils for, and then icy pain, which you want warming essential oils for. Um, so check that out. Um, let's see, any more questions? Whew, got them all. Whew. Alrighty, so I think I grabbed all of the questions that were in the post earlier. Um, and I guess if anybody else has any questions, dive right into the comments because I am here rearing to go and ready to answer your questions, um, that you may have about essential oils. Um, you are welcome, Raven. And like I mentioned, there are substitutions for different essential oils, um, in the recipe under substitutions. But if you ever, if you need a custom recipe and you are VIP, just leave me a comment in there. Let me know which essential oils you have, which essential oils you want to replace, and I can do that for you. Do you have a recipe for natural deodorant? I do not have one yet in there, no. Um, I am mostly focused on health issues, although you guys have been voting lately for, let's see, I have makeup, I have liquid foundation slash BB cream in here as well as a sugar scrub. So I will definitely be adding to both of those categories per the votes of the VIP members in our Facebook group. Um, any oils for dizziness, not necessarily nausea. Um, that's super tricky because that deals with the inner ear a lot of times. Feeling dizzy is like an inner ear thing unless it's low blood sugar or low blood pressure, which can cause dizziness. Um, and inner ear things like tinnitus and all of that stuff are really difficult to treat with essential oils. So I would try to find out, especially if this is a frequent thing, what is making you feel dizzy? Um, I know over diffusing essential oils can make you feel a little bit dizzy. Too much sugar, too much caffeine um, can also have that effect. So yeah, there's nothing right off that's going to directly help you all of a sudden not feel dizzy. However, it can't hurt to try inhaling something calm, um, a calming essential oil. So for you, that may be geranium. That may be something that helps you to relax and that can help you to kind of focus, center, and calm and relax. Um, or it may be sweet orange or it may be something completely different. So that's what I would... So side effect. Okay, so like a side effect from a medication or something. Yeah, that's really difficult because if if I'm correct in, yeah, from a medication, exactly. So that is really hard because what happens with pharmaceuticals is they're technically not even side effects, they're direct effects. They're just the effects that nobody wants and nobody either wants to talk about or nobody really desires. Um, just like essential oils, like you may want to help clear up your age spots and you may apply that lemon essential oil on your skin and it may even help but if you go into the sun you are going to have a phototoxic burn on your skin and that's not a side effect of an essential oil that's a direct effect that's part of using the lemon essential oil so part of using a medication sometimes is dizziness and that is something that is pushed on your body um, that is, you know, your body doesn't really have a chance to say, I want this or not. And that is really difficult to undo without stop taking your medication. So, um, yeah, unfortunately that is very difficult to remedy, but I would suggest, I mean, the best you can do, um, that may actually try to help and won't hurt at all is going to be inhaling something calming. So that's what I would suggest for you. Hey, Sharon. 
how are you doing? Awesome to see you guys here tonight. I know it's kind of late, but I was gonna get on earlier, but I had something else I had to do earlier. So I'm like, okay, I'll just, I just posted about it too. So I thought, well, I'll just come on a little bit later. So any more questions for me tonight before we start our week? I'm really excited about next week. We have, um, for those of you in our basics class, we have um, week three on topical use. I'm working on that new resource for you guys to be able to look up the exact essential oils you need per body system. Um, oh, I'm really, really excited about that. I've already started um, organizing the information and putting that together. So I'm really, really, really excited about that as well as designing the cover and a bunch of other stuff. So super, super excited. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions? Yay! Anita has a question. I love questions. My baby is six months old and he is apparently, his stomach is upset and I was recommended applying an MLM blend topically, which I think is not safe, but maybe there's a single I could use. Let me know which essential oil um, blend or single, um, I think you said it was a blend, um, that that is and I can let you know if it's safe or not. Um, but I would highly recommend gripe water. I believe I actually have information for that in the, um, learning center. Do I have that or not? Actually, I don't think I have that yet. I don't know if you have ever heard of gripe water. Let me grab out of my spreadsheet. Give me one second. I want to find that link for you that talks about gripe water. It is super, super effective. Um, give me one second. I don't really have a direct link for this. It's not under gripe water. I don't know where it would be. Hang on one second. Because this is super, super effective for upset tummy, especially when you are talking about a six month old. And this is something that I used with my kids. And I actually um actually made my own with um fennel the seed like not the essential oil do not use the essential oil um and even some baking soda and it was super super effective i can't seem to find it darn it all um yeah digest zen i do not recommend so what i'm going to do is go into our library um leahjacobson.com slash library and click on the blends safety files. Now I do have a free level available. Um, I'm not sure if Digest Zen is actually part of that. I think it is. Yes. So if you enroll at the free level, let me actually give you this link right here. Okay. LeahJacobson.com slash EOBS. Scroll all the way down to the um, area that asks you if you want free access. Put your name and email in there. You'll be emailed um, a confirmation email just to make sure because we don't want to spam that you did in fact request that. Then you will get login instructions and you can click on doTERRA, then digest Zen to access um, that safety file. There's 42 different blends that I offer for free. There's almost 400 in the paid level. But I'm going to right now actually read off for you and let you know what is in that. But that is a blend that I actually do not recommend that even adults use. So this has ginger, fennel, coriander, peppermint, tarragon, anise, and caraway. Now fennel is potentially carcinogenic. Tarragon is um, blood thinning, I know at least. Anise as well is potentially blood thinning um, and it, so many different um, issues. So as a whole, this blend is not recommended because it's a reproductive hormone modulator due to one or more essential oils in the blend. You do not want to use if you have bleeding disorders before and after surgery because it's anti anticoagulant. Um, if you have endometriosis, you want to avoid. If you have estrogen dependent cancers, you want to avoid G6PD deficiency or cardi cardiac fibrillation. Not safe for any age, not safe for pregnancy, not safe for anybody. Um, and there's actually even more, um, which you can actually find out um, with the free access. And it has drug interaction. So yeah, I completely do not recommend it at all. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to Amazon right now because there is gripe water that you can actually buy. Um, and there are different brands out here, but I'm gonna grab, this is the one, the original one that I, let me just make sure really quickly that they didn't 
change their ingredients to include essential oils. I have to be super careful of that. So this one has ginger extract, which is not an essential oil and fine, as well as fennel extract, which is herbal, not an essential oil and is fine, as well as water, vegetable glycerin, um, and a couple of other things that, yeah, baking soda, which is um, recommended. So this is the one I recommend. There are actually more than one brand that I would recommend. You just want to make sure that you check out the ingredients. Like I just double checked just to make sure. But there are more and more um, brands now. And actually, let me check out this other one as well. That's another option for you. Same thing. Ginger, fennel, um, organic lemon juice fruit powder, chamomile flower extract. Okay, so this would be a second option for you as well to check out. Yeah, people don't. People do not realize that that blend is so unsafe. They do not realize that. There are many blends that have many safety issues, which is why I highly recommend, if possible, that you create your own blends. And that's why I provided the EO Recipes Club as an option so that you can basically have access to um, recipes that you can create for yourself instead of relying on pre-made blends that are full of safety issues. And this goes for any company. Um, they all have unsafe essential oil blends or essential oil blends that are not going to be safe for a large population of people. Um, there's usually at least one essential oil in there that's either blood thinning, not safe for kids, not safe for pregnancy, potentially carcinogenic, you know, drug interactions, on and on and on. So you can access all of that over at leahjacobson.com slash EOBS and just grab the free level and you can have that information. You are welcome. You are welcome. Um, let me make sure. Hey, Sharon, just tuned, turned in. So I don't know if you answered my question. Is there a substitute for tea tree? I did not see your question about a substitute for tea tree um, on the other thread either. Um, is there a substitute for tea tree as my three sisters are allergic and would like, like to make antivirus inhaler? You can, oh, darn it, because tea tree is so amazing. Um, if they're not on blood thinners or have any issues with cinnamon bark, that is really effective for germs as well. Um, lemon is really great too. Um, you, you could use that, but I'd really like to add something else to that as well. Um, let me see. Yeah, because my original antivirus or anti-germ inhaler used cinnamon bark um, or cinnamon leaf, but there's still safety issues with that. And tea tree is so, so effective. But you know what, Sharon? You can actually, I know you are a VIP member of the EO Recipes Club. If you leave me a post or a comment over in the EO Recipes Club group, um, then maybe that's where you asked your question. No, I don't see it over there. Um, we can chat and I can come up with a custom recipe for you. Um, let's see. The EO Recipe Club helps so much. Great Raven, so you are in there. I'm so excited, that's great. There's a wealth of information over there. It's just ridiculous. Um, there's a teething oil for babies that has essential oils. I know, I know I get asked about that a lot actually. It's, it's either the pumpkin butt brand or there may be other ones as well. Unfortunately, yeah, I do not recommend them because they contain essential oils. Your best bet for teething, and this is over in the Learning Center under Children, you can click Teething, is going to be Chamomile Hydrosol. You can use either German or you can use Roman, either one. Um, let me go ahead and actually just link this right here. If you are not already a member of the Learning Center, um, hang on one second. I lost where I was live over here. Give me one second. Okay, so here's the direct link for teething. If you are a member and you probably have to log in, your browser hopefully will save your login information. If you are not already a member, then you can do this. You can enroll for free at leahjacobson.com. Scroll down to you hit the yellow box and roll. And then once you're in there, click on the children's tab and then you can find information for teething. Um, let's see. Is Howood oil unsafe? Um, what would be the botanical name for that? And the reason why I ask, let me just pull something up really quickly here because there are there there can be a couple of different um, essential oils that people actually call Howood. 
So let me get one second. So Hoewood is actually, so some companies actually call whole leaf, the linalol chemotype, whole wood. But just to make sure, because there are a couple of different varieties and some of them have safety and some of them do not. Um, see, I was going to say give me the botanical name, but actually they're the same for all of them. So what I would really need is actually the GCMS report because whole leaf linalol, and this is a cinnamomum camphora, um, Actually, there is a sub, if you can, if you have the full botanical name, that will be helpful because there is a Cinnamomum camphora subspecies glavensens, which actually is the whole leaf linalol that you want, or it's Cinnamomum cam camphora chemotype linalol, which again is the one you want. There is a cineol chemotype, which is for ages 10 plus. There is a camphor chemotype, which is neurotoxic, and I do not recommend anyone use. So super important to know, not just the botanical name, because it doesn't always have, have the full picture, but the chemotype. And if you don't have the full chemotype, a lot of brands don't actually reveal that um, or add that information. Some of them don't even know it's a thing and it exists. Um, they need to contact their supplier when you ask them, but if they have a GCMS report, that can actually be super helpful in locating what chemotype this is because the chemotype is actually reflective of one of the high constituents in the GCMS report. So if you have either one of those informations, then um, then you can let me know and then I can better help you on the safety. How do you determine what oils are unsafe for dogs? Is it the constituents? If so, which ones? Yes. So all of the safety is actually based upon one or more certain constituents that are in an essential oil. For example, peppermint, we recommend for ages six and above, not below age six, because of the menthol that peppermint contains. Um, rosemary, eucalyptus, cardamom, all of those have high levels of 1,8-cineol, um, generally at a 40% dilution, or 40, yeah, 40% dilution, a 40% concentration or higher within that essential oil. Essential oils have dozens, sometimes hundreds of individual constituents. So all of the safety is actually based on those specific constituents and the safety issues that they caused. We know that menthol can cause breathing issues in young children, 1-8-cineol can cause breathing issues in young children, that furanocoumarin, which is a constituent found in trace amounts in a lot of the citrus essential oils can cause phototoxic reactions when applied to the skin when not properly diluted enough. And that dilution can vary from 0.4% for bergamot to 4% for um, grapefruit and 2% for lemon, depending on the amount of furanocoumarins that are actually in that essential oil. Um, and that's how we determine topical maxes. That's how we determine the safety of ages. That's how we determine the safety and the interactions with drugs or blood thinners if it's carcinogenic and all of that is based on the specific constituents. And then yes, then we can say avoid peppermint. What we really are saying is avoid menthol. When we say avoid eucalyptus and rosemary and cardamom around children under the age of 10, it's because of the 1-H-Cineol. So all of the safety is tied directly back to um, scientific research and data that scientists and researchers have done and made and created. And that's where we get the safety of the essential oils is specifically from those constituents. And the severity of the safety is based on the amount of that constituent that's in the essential oil. Um, difference between, as far as unsafe for dogs, we just know from, you know, historically speaking, dogs are reacting from this essential oil, often can be traced back to specific constituents but it's not ethical to just line up dogs and give them essential oils and see what ones they react to. Um, same with pregnancy. It's usually an, an after realization, not an afterthought, but kind of like after the fact the thing has happened and there's been too many times that this has happened um, that now we have to make a warning out. And of course, yes, it can be done via research as well, but some of the safety is done from accidents happening. Um, I know technically there's nothing that I am aware of research-wise 
that says to avoid peppermint essential oil if you are breastfeeding because it reduces milk supply and yet a huge amount of women that breastfeed have found a personal connection between either the inhalation of peppermint essential oil, topical usage of peppermint essential oil, or even drinking large amounts of herbal tea and it affecting their milk supply. So that is something that is more anecdotal, um, but most everything else we have legit um, research to back all of that up for. The difference between a clinical aromatherapist versus a certified aromatherapist. So that depends on the school and the level of training that they provide. I personally was trained through Aroma Head Institute back in 2013 and um, I went through their scholars program. So I went through the um, aromatherapy certification program which earned me my certified aromatherapist title because that was over 200 hours and then within the scholars program I then advanced to the advanced graduate program and that big program along with some others like viruses in the immune system and a bunch of other smaller ones contributed to my graduation from the scholars program which then gave me the certified clinical aromatherapy title so um that is something that you can get through some specific schools other schools that may not teach as many hours you are not going to get that title and that certification um, but the awesome school that I went to um, gave me that certification. So that's basically an acknowledgement of hours studied at the specific school. Um, and that's the difference between clinical and certified. So clinical would be basically double the hours. So over 400 specific hours training at one specific school. Um, Ashley, I know that you mentioned before that pine can be substituted for fur for congestion issues. Would it be used for focus as well, like with Lyme? Um, it's worth a try. Yes. I know the research has been done specifically with the fur. Um, so it really depend on what those exact constituents were that were the research panned out as being best and ideal for fur. But I would be surprised if pine didn't also work, to be honest. Um, cinnamon can pour a little, oh, perfect. Excellent, Sharon. So what you have is true whole wood oil, which is actually whole leaf, um, linalool chemotype. And that particular one is actually safe for all ages, safe for pregnancy, safe to use during, if you're breastfeeding as well. Um, so yes, that would be the one. Thanks so much for doing that research. Now we know. Yes. So that one is going to be fine to use. And I don't believe it even has a topical max. Nope, it doesn't. I'm looking at my spreadsheet because it's up there. But of course, there's also this. So it should say under whole leaf right here. Holy, I know this is backwards, linalool chemotype. But under here, it says whole leaf linalool slash whole wood. And here is the botanical name right here. Um, and this is the chemotype. So that's why there's that. So if you have the Cinnamomum camphora lin chemotype linalool, then this is the one that you have right here. And this says what I said, all ages, pregnancy, breastfeeding, no topical max and safe around pets. So that would be the one. You are welcome, Sharon. So you know what, guys, this is when having the online version is actually super handy versus having a print book is when you know you saw something somewhere um but you're not sure where and you can actually do a search um because there's no actual whole whole wood actually listed obviously in the big letters it's tucked right under here because that's kind of an unofficial name that shouldn't really be used but it is um let's see you need my book you can find everything in the library leahjacobson.com slash library you can find everything in there let me give you a link for it um, there you go. Um, let's see. Um, hey me, hi Leah. I made a roll on of your old scar recipe last year and saw you also had one for stretch marks, but I cannot see it anymore. Is it no longer available at the free level? No. So the scar one, I believe, I think, is there a scar one available at the free level? Give me one second. I'm going to check. Um, Yes, so the new Scar Roller Bottle recipe is available at the free level. Um, stretch Marks is not available at the free level, but it is in there. I have a couple of different, um, I have a massage blend as well as a roller bottle. 
and I have you know all the safety and all the stuff for that as well so you can find that over there but I do have the scarves available at the free level yes um let me see if there's any more comments I'm not seeing any yet any more comments or questions for me before I get off it is almost 11 p.m here and let's see I already did that I think I'm done with everything I need to get done tonight. I've already scheduled my daily tips. Tomorrow I'm excited because I'm going to be adding new blends. So those of you who are enrolled in the EO uh, blend safety files, you will see another probably 10 or so blends come through tomorrow. Um, actually, my pendant is actually empty tonight. I don't always have something in my pendant. So I have nothing in my pendant right now. Absolutely nothing. It's just on because it's beautiful. And I never needed it today, so I just left it on because I liked it. Um, Sharon, I was lazy at bedtime a couple of nights ago and grabbed a blend that I have as I didn't want to go downstairs for my oils. I had a reaction and thought maybe it was the Hoewood. Well, anybody can react and be sensitive to anything at any time. So just because it technically doesn't, as you, because of tea tree, you had, you said you had three sisters who were allergic to it. And you know, officially there's nothing wrong with tea tree essential oil. It's supposed to be safe for everyone and all of that. But we know anyone can have a reaction to anything at any time. Some people are allergic to pine or fir or tea tree or lemon or, you know, pick one. People can be allergic to things. So um, that's not to say that it wasn't the whole wood. So if you have any other um, single essential oils from that blend that you want to list out for me, I can see what may be the likely culprit. Um, just let me know. And I can do that for you. Oh, favorite brand. Um, I don't really have a favorite. There's a few that I buy from and there's a few that I don't buy from. But you can find all of that information in the Learning Center under the Brands tab. Um, if you are looking for places to shop. Um, interactions with SSRIs that just with ingestion. Um, I believe so. Let me just do a quick check. Yeah, avoid internal use. Yeah, that would be, let me just make sure, avoid internal use. Yes, so that would be with ingestion only. Yep. Yeah, a lot of drug interactions are only if you ingest the essential oils. Um, one huge difference though is going to be aspirin and blood thinners. There can be a reaction even from inhalation, um, which actually leads me to think that it is possible, possible potentially to have um, a reaction inhaling for any drug, but especially it is for blood thinning. I know that for dang sure. Um, so great question. Okay. The others look like ones I've used before. Um, what kind of reaction did you have? Because it's possible if the blend was oxidized, if you've had it a while, it's possible that one of the essential oils in that blend, let me look at the shelf life of Howood. Um, may have simply oxidized and you may have had an oxidation um, reaction from that. Let's see, where do I have I don't know, shelf life? I don't think I have shelf life listed for whole leaf in this spreadsheet. Or whole wood, I should say. Leaf. No. I mean, technically it is, but. Let me just check over here. Holy. Leaf. I don't see a specific. If, if your blend is more than say two years old or one year, if you haven't refrigerated it properly, um, then it's possible that that was, but I, yeah, I can't really see anything. Let's see. Uh, cold like symptoms. Oh, I see. Huh? You mean like you're coming down with something? It could be a slight allergy to something. Um, yeah, I would definitely avoid it just to be sure and make yourself a note somewhere because if you're like me, you think you're gonna remember and you probably won't. I'm like, oh, I'll definitely remember that. Yeah, life goes on, things happen. You're like, what was that thing that I was allergic to or thought I was allergic to? So I would just make a note of it and the next time you happen to use the blend and like give yourself a couple of weeks so there's no specific link, um, see if that happens to happen again. Plugged up, couldn't breathe while stuffy. Yeah, it's possible it's a reaction to one of the essential oils and it could be whole leaf. It's possible. Um, I would definitely make a note and, and, um, and avoid it. 
Um, could one use essential oils to thin the blood instead of heparin? Yeah, that's the thing. But you have to work with a doctor because you, it needs to be closely monitored. When my grandmother was living with us for almost a year, th this was probably 10, 11 years ago, she um, was on blood thinners as well. And I had to take her over like d daily or every couple of days. They wanted her over there to check her blood levels because it has to be within a certain range. You know, it can't be too thick, can't be too thin. So yeah, you have to be super careful with that. I mean, it's absolutely possible. That's why in the recipes club for, actually, do I have my blood clots recipe up there yet? I'm not sure if I do. Yeah, I don't have one up there yet for that. But in my blood clots recipe, it is, it's anticoagulant essential oils. But you have to be super duper careful when you use it because if you are already on blood thinners, it can make those blood thinners either number one, work better, which means it can thin the blood extra well, too much slash dangerous, or it can interact and make certain medications um, work worse. Now, obviously, if you're using a blood thing in essential oil, it's probably also going to, you know, extra thin the blood along with the other medications that you are taking. So I do not advise you kind of try this on your own. Um, it can be risky. You have to know what you're doing, but logic tells you, yes, you can use anticoagulant essential oils to help with a blood clot. Absolutely. Um, new to essential oils. Hey, Marlisa or Marlisa. Is there a concrete way to shop for oils and know they are safe and effective? What you want to do is you want to do your research on the essential oils from somebody that doesn't sell essential oils. I don't sell essential oils and look for the safety of the essential oils that you want to use. Um, the safety as well as the efficacy, what the essential oil is actually truly good for. I do not sell essential oils. So when I have this book here that tells you the safety and the benefits of the top 60 essential oils, I'm not telling you these benefits so you can go ahead and buy my sweet marjoram. I don't sell sweet marjoram. So there, there's no incentive for, for me to tell you that essential oils are good for this, that, and the other if they're not. Um, a lot of people that sell essential oils they are listing everything under the sun of reasons why you should buy that essential oil because it does everything. I know there are companies out there that have um, a specific blend every month or every week or every so often that they promote. And it's like, it does everything. It does everything for you. It does. It's like, okay, every essential oil does everything for me and every essential oil is essential and I must have it now. No, that's actually not the case. Different essential oils have different benefits based on the therapeutic properties which are attributed to the essential oils from the constituents that are in the essential oils. Now, if you are asking about the quality of the brand or of the essential oils, then that's an entirely different story. So we have the reputation of the essential oils, what is safe and what is not based on those constituents. We have the reputation of the um, efficacy of how well they work for different situations. And then we have, once we know that information, then you can decide where to purchase those essential oils from. Um, I highly suggest looking at brands that provide to you a current frequently updated GCMS report so that you can see a reflection of what you would be purchasing in the bottle. Um, that is not guaranteed. There are some companies out there that provide uh, GCMS reports, but they're dated from like 2016. Or, or, you know, way last year. So if that truly reflected the, the um, or represented the essential oil that you are going to be purchasing today, it's probably already expired. So there's a few things to look for, but I do have um, information in the Learning Center under brands. And I go over, let me go brands, Learning Center. Okay, hang on. I lost the tab that I had it open. Okay, so under brands, you can find information for um, why checking the safety matters on brands. Why? Okay, so there's a cheat sheet that I actually go through because I have reviewed certain brands for people and I always get people asking me, what do you think about this brand? What do you think about that brand? So you can actually download a checklist. It's called How to Choose an Essential Oil Company Checklist where you can actually go to their website and you can look for different parts of information and determine if they are a company that you want to purchase from simply from the information that they are providing for you. 
So I tell you why it matters, why that is important. Um, I talk about GCMS reports over here on the Brands tab inside the Learning Center. Um, I talk about um, why third-party testing matters. Um, if price indicates quality, I talk about what the therapeutic grade label actually means. And then I have my opinion on some brands. And then I have a whole alphabetized list, including links of me on YouTube going live, reviewing live for you the different brands. Now, I started doing this on non-US brands because I already had an opinion on the US brands and I wanted to fill the gap for those of you outside of the US. So I did, I think, over 60 different, I went live for like several days in a row for like a couple of weeks um, and really went through all of the different companies that you asked me about. Um, but what's cool about that, even if you don't purchase from the brand, if you click on any one of those YouTube videos, you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm walking you through checking a website, the different essential oils to look for, the different safety information or lack thereof that you can look for and find um, just by you know looking at a different company. And you can do the same thing on a company that you are interested in. So the quality is a little bit more difficult to, um, you know, have an, have the quality is a little bit difficult to tell just by looking at the website, but you can get clues based on the information that they are providing, whether they actually care about safety, care about customers, care about the information that they are providing to make sure their customers are safe and full of knowledge, or whether they're simply just plain selling essential oils and they really are clueless. So I give you some insight and tips over there. Um, I think I actually did one on plant therapy. I did one on plant therapy as well, um, which is I think the first and only one so far that I've done for US brands, because I get into other stuff that you guys needed that I had to um, do for you. So I haven't been live for a while doing um, different brands, but there's a lot of information. There's Barefoot, there's um, Aroma Land and Earth Yard and um, it just a zillion over there. So you can find all that information under the Brands tab. Um, price does vary and price does not indicate quality. It really doesn't. Um, is the cheat sheet the one that lists which essential oil brands you'd recommend? I do have a link for that as well. So I do have under the Leah's opinions on some brands. I do have that opinion about specific brands listed there. Um, but on the bottom where it says how to choose an EO company checklist, that's where you actually download the checklist. You can print it out and then you can go to your favorite website and you can, you know, look through the checklist, check yes or no for whatever. And then what the results are, you can determine whether that's somewhere that you want to actually use your money, uh, spend your money and purchase essential oils. We can be picky guys. Hey, there are literally hundreds, hundreds of essential oil companies out there. We can be as picky as we want. So I choose to be picky because I can, because there are still several brands that I can choose to purchase from. Um, you know, if one's out of stock, I can go to another and vice versa. Um, Eden's is the Eden's garden and they seem legit. Um, let me tell you this, every single company out there has blends that are not going to be safe for you or for your children. That is for every single company. So, just saying, um, and, and pretty much every company really does lack in so, at some level or another in the information that they are providing. So I would say for the most part, you, there are a number of brands, including Eden's Garden that you can purchase from and you can have great effective results. I would just suggest with any company that you go by safety information separate from them separate from the company selling those to you because they don't always let you know when a blend is blood thinning when it's potentially carcinogenic when a single essential oil um is a blood thinner when a single essential oil is not safe for pregnancy or safe for children a lot of companies do not offer that information so you could go to their website and you can be like oh this looks like a great essential oil because some of them have all the benefits of essential oils on there meaning they have any benefit from essential oil that ever existed is listed all on their page like this. It's like, no, that single singular essential oil is only good for maybe this amount of stuff, which is still a lot. But a lot of them don't include the safety, which is where this comes in, 
which is where this comes in and which is where you can ask your questions in this group. Is this safe for me or not or why? So you can pretty much buy from a lot of different places. Just make sure that the safety information is, if it's not accurate on there and 99% of the time it won't be, that you at least have somewhere re where you are getting safe and reliable safety information so that you are using those essential oils safely for you and also that they are going to be effective for the issue that you want. Just like earlier, the question about Digest Zen on a six month old baby that was recommended, it is not safe. That blend is not safe for any living, breathing creature, period. Not safe for a six month old either. And this is something that you won't know, that you won't be told, that you won't find out unless you do your research and ask. This group is called Using Essential Oils Safely for a reason, because we are all about safety. Several years ago when I first started, I realized there is a huge need to bring safety to people. You can see all day long on Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook all the ways that you could use an essential oil, benefits for essential oils, half of which are, are blown up and, and you know overvaluated. But safety is lacking. Safety is lacking. We need to know what's good for teething babies. We need to know the safety for that. What is good for headaches? We need to know what the safety is. We need to know the essential oils that are safe, yes, but... If you are breastfeeding and you are using peppermint, you could have reduced milk supply. So this stuff needs to be out there. And if you decide to use it anyway, that's fine. But know better, do better. So do your research, do your research on the safety, make sure you're using them safely and make sure that they are going to be effective for you as well so that you get a good result. Um, Ashley, when you are going to answer the question about the DIY nail polish remover, I'm wondering if I was right. <laughs> I've just kind of let that go. I've let you guys have been so smart. Every time I throw one of those out there, you're I'm just like, you have it, guys. You so have it. It looks like there's only been a few comments though. Um, let me actually do that now. So Kelly said lemon and grapefruit. She got on her nails before and they turned yellow a few hours later. Ashley, you were pretty much the only one to answer this. I cannot believe it. Usually people eat those things up. I guess people just weren't sure what might be wrong with that. So hang on. Oh, I've been talking way too long. My mouth was dry. Okay, Ashley, you said no appropriate carrier for dilution. So effectively, possibly applying neat oils to the skin surrounding nails. Absolutely correct. Um, no concrete volume of carrier. So even if dilution was achievable, can't be sure of dilution. Correct. Number two. Number three, grapefruit essential oils phototoxic and lemon essential oils potentially phototoxic. So undiluted will exceed topical max. Correct. Conclusion, not safe. Correct. So one could assume the volume of carrier is close to two ounces, however, not quite less volume of 11 drops. So in theory, if appropriate carrier was used, it could, it could be properly diluted. So let me double check this. So this is a um, basically a question that somebody had for the group. It's a pending post asking basically if this is safe or not. And it's a DIY nail polish remover that suggests to a two ounce glass bottle that you add five drops of lemon, three drops of orange and three drops of grapefruit. Fill the rest of the way with rubbing alcohol or white vinegar. So yeah, the problem with that is the alcohol and the vinegar aren't going to mix with the essential oils. So yes, you could potentially have phototoxic burns on your skin from using this. Number one, it's not even going to work, okay? I, I actually tried using straight lemon essential oil on nail polish, does not work. It does not work. And then I had to like apply a bunch of carrier oil after, and then I had to like wash it off really well and apply carrier oil after, you know, just to make sure I wasn't gonna get a phototoxic burn. But it absolutely does not work, especially if it's gonna be diluted in this much. But if it was a carrier oil, which again, it's not going to be effective, so I don't recommend you do this. Um, five drops of lemon essential oil in two ounces is going to be a, just under 1%. Um, three drops of grapefruit essential oil is gonna be about a half a percent. So technically both of those, if properly diluted, would be the, below the threshold for phototoxicity. But this um, recipe as it stands is simply not going to be effective or safe because essential oil will not mix with rubbing alcohol or white vinegar. So you were right, you were right, Ashley. I can't believe like nobody ate that up. That's crazy. Usually people are all over those safety slew things, but I haven't posted one in a while either. And this one could have been a little bit more confusing to some. So I appreciate Ashley that you jumped right in and you bit that, ate that up and chewed it out and everything, spit it out and all that stuff. You got it right. 
Um, can you tell me about Aborvite? I would love to tell you about Aborvite. It's one of my favorite essential oils to tell people never to use. <laughs> This is Aborvite. I know that it's backwards for you. Um, this actually might be one that I have available at the free level of the Essential Oil Single Safety Files. The online version that you can find in our library. So let me check really, yes, it is. Cause it's one of the ones that people use and they're not supposed to use because it's unsafe. So if you go to Leah Jacobson, and I'll read it to you in one second. Um, if you go to leahjacobson.com slash EO singles, you, oh, that was seven hours ago. This one. You can find 30 different of these profiles. Again, there's 240 in the paid level of online or in the ebook or in this print book, 240 essential oils. Um, Abor Vite is one of the ones that is available, um, is one of the 30 available at the free level. So this is one that I do not recommend anyone use because it is neurotoxic. It is potentially convulsant. If you have epilepsy, which obviously is not every single person, it's not recommended during pregnancy or breastfeeding, not recommended to use around your pets. If you choose to use it, you still have to dilute on the skin to 0.25%. Super, 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 super low. Um, but again, neurotoxic. So I highly recommend avoiding Arborvite. Um, and that is also known as Thuja, also known as Western Red Cedar. And it's Thuja Placata is the botanical name. So let me type that out for you. So that is a botanical name that you want to look for. Now, if this essential oil is obviously if you use it all by itself, but if this is also found in a blend, I do not recommend using it. Do not recommend using it at all. It is neurotoxic and not safe. Um, let's see. What oil would be good to use for a wart on a kid's foot? You can use um, frankincense. What age is the child, by the way? Um, but you can use frankincense essential oil. Um, you can also cover it with a band-aid to help that not evaporate. And you can use a frankincense essential oil without diluting it at all. If you apply it to a Q-tip and then dab that Q-tip directly onto the wart and you can use that and cover it with a band-aid. 12. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's great. Um, totally good then. Let's see, I just looked for gripe water, nowhere to be found. Oh, Bolivia. Yes, you can make some. You can actually make some. If you get yourself some fennel seeds, some anise seeds, you can add a couple of teaspoons to um, a couple of cups of water and you can simmer it on the stove, bring it to a boil, let it simmer for like 20 minutes and then shut it off. Let it get to where it's like warm but definitely not hot and not cold. So where it's kind of like warm, but not quite room temperature either. Strain the seeds out, add a half a teaspoon of baking soda to that mixture, and then you are good to go. You can literally give your child drops of it at a time. And I mean, you can give like a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon, it's, it's not gonna matter. Um, but you can actually, even drops will work actually had this um, plastic syringe that I actually used with my daughter's big old fat. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it here on Amazon. Yeah, it actually, it looked different. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, here we go. Here's an easy dose baby one. I don't know if you can get this in Bolivia where you are. Um, there you go. Perfect. So this is fancier than the one that I used. My daughter's going to be 16 next week. Um, but this will work. So you can actually just suck up just the, the smallest amount of this and just put it right on the side of their cheek. And it really helps um, promote burping and can release that gas. So super, super effective. Um, you are welcome, Lori. You are welcome. Whew. I've been live for over an hour. It's so fun. I can't believe it. That went super fast. So does anyone else have any questions for me? Um, if this is the first time you've ever seen me, I am a certified clinical aromatherapist who has been on here answering your questions for about seven years now. Um, I am also, as just mentioned, a certified herbalist as well, although I definitely have my aromatherapist hat on a whole lot more than my herbalist hat for sure. 
because you guys want that information. So I love coming here live and answering your questions and basically just helping everyone learn about how to use essential oil safely because there is tons of information out there on, you know, use essential oils, use essential oils for this, use essential oils for that. So I understand that people are aware that essential oils are a good thing, but there's a huge lack of safety information out there. And that is where I come in to help fill that void and answer questions for you. As you can tell, we have like a bazillion members in this group. You guys have joined um, over the last few years and you keep having questions and questions and questions. And I love it because I love answering your questions. So if there's any more questions that I can answer for you today, I would really, really like to do that. I love, love questions. So let me see. Ashley is looking forward to module four tomorrow. So am I, you are going to learn about everything topical use. So exciting, so exciting. Lori is saying, is there any oils that are safe to buy at Amazon or only through the websites? There are some, just make sure that you are purchasing from the seller. So if you choose to purchase Eden's Garden, that was mentioned a, a little while ago, make sure that you are purchasing the Eden, Eden's Garden essential oils that are sold by Eden's Garden and not by a third party seller just to make sure that you are getting what you asked for. Um, I like purchasing or acacia essential oils on Amazon. Um, they are one of the brands that I like to purchase from. Um, yeah, but there are, there are several different ones, but you absolutely can, um, safely purchase essential oils right on Amazon. I do. And even my cleaning, um, essential oils, my tea tree and my lemon, I purchase in like four ounce bottles. And I'm not as picky about brand when it comes to that because they are used for cleaning. Like they're going to kill the germs but I don't have to worry about putting them on my skin um, or anything like that. So, and I don't want to spend a ton of money. So usually a four ounce bottle um, goes for about $12 or so, depending on the essential oil and depending on um, the brand availability. But yeah, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, guys, if you end up having any more questions after I get off, you can always ask your question at the top of this group under the right something and your post will be pending, and Roxanne will be jumping on tomorrow, tomorrow's Monday, and she will be tagging you in all of the appropriate places. But 99% of the things you can actually find from one of the resources in our library. So let me link to that again for you. My throat's just getting really dry. Um, the Learning Center, of course, again, is 100% free to access. The Essential Oil Recipes has a free level. Blends safety files have a free level. The singles essential oil safety files also have a free level as does essential oil profiles. So you can access a lot of information and keep yourself busy for quite a while combing through the safety of those different blends and singles essential oils and then find the safety and the benefits under the essential oil profiles resources. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I'm sure we will chat soon, probably in a couple days. So I will talk to you guys later. See ya.